I'd like to talk to you today about forgetting your past. So many people today are caught up in their past. And see, if you stay in your past, there will be no great future for you. And God has carefully designed his word to take care of all our problems of the past, hello, and also build you a better future for your life. God wants you to have a better life. And we're going to deal with a scripture today, which I want you to apply to your life. So it's very important. We're going to look at Philippians, the third chapter, and we're going to be looking at verse 13. Uh, the apostle Paul is talking here. He said, brethren, I count my, not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now, notice he's saying there, this one thing I do do. This, if I don't do anything else, I know about this one thing. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, Paul's saying, I got to leave my past behind me so I can go forward. See, you can't go f forward if you stay in your past. Uh, years ago, a couple shared something with me about, about this, that a lot of people, they're in their past. It's like you're trying to go one way and, you know, something pulling the other way. It's like, uh, you know, you're stretching your legs apart and that won't work. Amen. Now, he goes on to say, he says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ. Notice he says, I press toward the price of the mark in Christ Jesus. In other words, your goal in life is to walk in Christ. Now, whether you know it or not, when you got born again, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. It says, all things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So you got to walk in the newness of Christ. Satan's objective is to keep you in your past, and how he'll do that is to try to bring your past up to you, the things that you've done before. They've all been taken care of by the blood of Jesus. If you accept that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, hey, it's already blotted out. And if you do miss the mark and you messed up, 1 John 1 and 9 says he's just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Well, you might turn around and say, well, pastor, you don't understand what I've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is a forgiving God. You know, the word of God will take care of all your issues. As a matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. It says it will take care of every single issue of your life. That's what the word of God was sent for, God. You know, the word of God will take care of all your issues. As a matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. It says it will take care of every single issue of your life. That's what the word of God was sent for. So you need to be taught the word. See, your problem, if you're going through oppression, if you're going through depression, it's a result of you have a spirit, you... You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live inside of a body. The real you is spirit. If you're suffering from oppression and depression, the reason is your spirit man is not being nourished. And when your spirit man is not being nourished, see the growing ground for the word of God, ladies and gentlemen, it, it goes into your spirit, but it also goes into your mind, your soul. That all consists of your heart. And the heart is the growing ground for the word of God. And if you don't put God's word on the inside of you, you subject to stay in your past, and there will be no great future for you. And God has already had a plan, has a plan for you to have a great future. Now look at Proverbs, the fourth chapter here. In verse 20, he said, my son, attend to my words. Now notice that he said, attend to his words. Not your words, God said, attend to his words. Incline thy ears to my saying. Incline your ears to what God has said in his word. See, ladies and gentlemen, God created you. He know more about you than you might know about yourself. But God knows. God knows all things. Now watch. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from the eyes. Now notice that he said, let them not depart from your eyes. Don't let the word of God depart from your eyes. So you're suffering from de depression. More than likely, guess what? The word of God is departing from your eyes. He said, let not depart from thy eye, but keep them in the midst of thy heart. Keep the word in your heart. Keep putting the word of God in your, in your heart. See, words are processed stuff, and God's word will produce great results in your life. God's word will cause you to prosper. God's word will, will cause you to be victorious. And I need to say something about this wealth. Whether you know it, God's word will cause you to get wealthy. The Bible talks about it is he that giveth you the power to get the wealth. The reason God wants you to be wealthy so you can be part of establishing his covenant in the earth. God loves you. He wants you to have plenty and be able to give and help others. That's what the kingdom of God is all about, ladies and gentlemen, be able to help somebody else. Amen. That's exciting. But I want to go back to this, verse 21. He said, let them not depart from thy eyes. 
keep them in the midst of thy heart. Now watch what he says about the word, verse 22. For they are life to those that find them, whoa, find what? The word, and health to your flesh. The word is health to your flesh. If you're suffering from sickness, the word is health to your flesh. The Bible, as a matter of fact, states, it says, God sent his word to heal all of your diseases. Amen? You know, a lot of times I was talking about uh, forgetting the past. Think about this a minute. A lot of people's sickness is a result of things they're holding on to in their past. That's what Paul said. You got to forget your past. Let it go. And how do you forget it? You fill yourself up with this word. God's word will drive out all that past, and he'll put the newness of life on the inside of your heart. Amen? And then he goes on and said, verse 23, keep the heart with all diligence. In other words, guard your heart. Protect what kind of words go on the inside of you. You can't let uh, bad information go on in you because bad in, bad out. There's a saying in the, in the computer, garbage in, garbage out. You produce garbage. But if you put God's word in you, you'll produce, produce the results of what God said you can have. Let's go on. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Whatever issue you have, you could be suffering from oppression. You could be suffering from depression. Hello? You could be, you could be suffering from arthritics. Hello? Amen. You could be suffering from rheumatism. It doesn't work. God's word has been sent to take care of every single issue of your life. You may say, Pastor, I've done some real bad, bad things in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the word is for, to renew your mind. Matter of fact, I'm going to share that with you. Go to Romans 12 a minute. Praise God. Romans 12. And he talks here about renewing the mind. I have to emphasize this important. When you accept that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, you got to have your mind renewed on the word. Now, listen to this. I'm going to say this very careful to you. Uh, a lot of times people, they say, well, I go to church. Well, when you go to church, is the church dealing with your issues of your life to make your life better? You go to church in order to get filled up with God's word so you can go back home to implement the word. See, you can just go to church, hear something, and if you don't implement it in your life, it's not going to, in your life, it's not going to do you any good. You're going to have to go, hear the word, get the word on the inside of you, and go implement it. I mean, you know for a fact, um, you can, you can go to a certain special training, and if you go get that training, you don't go implement it, it's not going to do you any good. The same situation with the God's Word. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to this clip. I want you to know that God loves you so very much, and we love you so very much. Until the next time, have a wonderful and prosperous and victorious day. Okay.